what, what do you remember most about uh, coaching uh, Cooper Cup uh, when, when, when you were in L.A.? And what is it like to kind of see him develop into uh, uh, what he is now? He's, he's always had that in him. You know, he, he's one of the smartest players I've ever been around at any position. Um, he really approaches the game like a quarterback, to be quite honest with you. I, I'll, I'll never forget. I actually, you can write this down. I threw to him at his private workout at Eastern Washington. Uh, <laughs> split time with his backup quarterback, and, and we missed one throw on a back end line uh, hammer route. You know, I overthrew him, and that was the only completion of the day. But that's neither here nor there. Uh, but, but Cooper, you know, he, he's one that he's a big picture thinker. So he really understands the structure of the defenses, the nuances of the route running, um, and, and he cares about the run game as well. And so, uh, you know, th there's oftentimes he would, he would screenshot, you know, pictures of, of defenses with run thoughts. You know, you'd, you'd wake up in the next morning to a midnight text from Cooper Cup, you know, with thoughts on things that could help the offense. And so um, he's, he's certainly rare that way. Zach Taylor talking about a guy he's going to have to try to slow down nine days from now when the Bengals take on the Rams at SoFi Stadium. Cooper Cup, one of the very best players in the NFL. A little Super Bowl 56, take your pick. Let's start with this. Which midseason acquisition will have a bigger impact for the Rams in the Super Bowl? Will it be Odo Beckham Jr. or Vaughn Miller? See, I, I kind of want to say Von Miller, but I, I think it's going to be Odell Beckham Jr. in part because the Bengals know that they've got to stop Cooper Cup. And so when Cooper Cup is going to be doubled or he's going to get covered, the guy that's going to be open is going to be Odell Beckham Jr. So I would bet, like, right now, that Odell Beckham Jr. is going to have a bigger day in terms of, like, production, maybe catches, whatever, than Cooper Cup will in the, in the Super Bowl. Yeah, I think that it will be OBJ. I think he's gradually gotten better and better and better. Ultimate team guy because his incentives throughout the playoffs tied directly to team achievements. And and he's been great, and I think he will be great. I think this is exactly what he's played his whole life to do. I know that that's cliche, that everyone does it, but I feel like for him especially, the opportunity to play in a Super Bowl, he's wanted to be, he's craved to be on a winner all these years. I mean, he got stuck with the Browns for crying out loud. So he's he's wanted this, not that, and he's finally getting this. You know, I'm just kidding. The Browns the Browns are, are trending somewhere. Next uh, question. And with that, next question, Super Bowl 56. Which player in the game – is the one with the most swag. Ooh, see, I like this one too because it's it's kind of Joe Burrow, and I'm like I'm try I'm tempted to say Joe Burrow, but I'm gonna say Aaron Donald because that dude has like chains that have 99s on them, and he's always got his own like you know personal lines or whatever. And like if you look directly into the Aaron Donald 99 chain, you might go blind because that's how much. Like, that's how much he spends on those things. That's how real those diamonds are. So give me Aaron Donald. Yeah, I I, I actually – now, I, you know I'll define swag. Is, swag. Uh. I don't. <laughs> Stuff we all get when we go to the Dunder Mifflin, no. uh, the Northeast Regional Sales Convention. Stuff we all mm. get. Swag. No. Um, I, I, I don't view it as clothing as much as its attitude. And obviously it's Joe Burrow. The attitude that, and it's it's an attitude that doesn't fit the package. Here's this grown-up Macaulay Culkin from Home Alone who's a badass. That's what creates swag, that he's able to transcend what you would expect from Joe Burrow and strike a completely different image of cool and confidence and I will... I will. There's no question about it. I will defeat you. Now, I like Evan McPherson's swag, too, from the standpoint of his confidence. He's not missing a kick. I love the, the explanation, the game against the Titans, when they had the opportunity to kick the field goal. Evan McPherson said to the backup quarterback, Brandon Allen, well, I guess we're going to the AFC Championship. I love that. I love uh -huh. that. There are so many kickers now that are just, they have that attitude where it is just automatic. Robbie Gold kicking through the the uh, the opposing team doing his warm-ups. I mean, there's just that some badass funny. kickers right now. I kind of like that. So, all right, what will be the most overplayed storyline of Super Bowl 56? Uh, either Matthew Stafford taking over for Goff, and then he comes in and they actually go to the Super Bowl, or uh, McVay, it's McVay versus McVay's assistant. Uh, one of those two. Yeah, I... I because the Super Bowl got knocked so far onto the back burner with all the stuff that happened this week, wow. there really hasn't been a chance for any storyline 
to get overplayed. That's actually so true. It's it's kind of like it's a one week lag between conference championship and Super Bowl. I kind of like that. So I'm going to say none. I'm going to say this year because of the Tom Brady retirement, the Brian mm. Flores lawsuit, the Stephen Ross one hundred thousand dollar bar twist, the Washington Football Team investigation. We haven't had a chance to overblow any of the storylines heading into Super Bowl 56. All right, let's take a break. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.